Hear that? God Almighty! It's moving! Run! This way! Quick! Hey everybody, Relay here. I'm gonna give you six good reasons to consider digging into your wallet for Phantom Liberty. Just as a precursor to the rest of this video, I know people probably have trust issues because the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 was not not as smooth as people might have liked. Uh, matter of fact, it wasn't smooth at all and for some people it was downright unplayable. But we have to think back even and uh, look at Witcher 3 for example. They have two great DLCs released for Witcher 3 which uh, were both incredible. And so we know from CD Projekt Red's past of course, this is if you think you can trust them. I think I can. I have uh, faith in CD Projekt Red because they've continuously rebuilt Cyberpunk 2077 to what it is today, which is a very fun, playable experience, actually. So I have hope that the Phantom Liberty DLC is going to be a lot like the Witcher DLCs, but maybe even better, which is a hard thing to top because they were they were great DLCs. Bloodwine and uh, Hearts of Stone were both very good DLCs. So I'm excited to see what they have going forward and I firmly believe that you won't be disappointed if you do consider buying it. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get to the actual reasons as to why you should consider buying Phantom Liberty. It's story. So the of campaign this. of Phantom Liberty Johnny. is said to be pretty intense and involves uh, no quite a few new characters that. that we haven't seen before. So Idris Elba's character, Solomon Reed, who's some sort of agent that uh, that although he seems like he's going to be helpful to you, we don't really know his intentions yet. There's also the new United States of America president, who is Rosalind Myers, and uh, she basically finds herself in a bit of a tough spot, and I'm assuming that's kind of how the uh, the DLC kicks off is you rescuing her. After that, there's one additional character, um, somebody who helps you out. Her name is Songbird, and she basically gives you the promise that she, um, even though Arasaka can't or anybody else can't, she might be able to cure you and um, somehow have you survive uh, without the chip or maybe um, by altering something within the chip. That's a promise of salvation. Lastly, our primary antagonist, who is Kurt Hansen. He is a former Militech veteran and the leader of the Bargus gang, who basically runs all of Dogtown. And that being said, he's probably going to be making V's life miserable, as uh, he definitely doesn't take too kindly to the president having crashed in his, in his district. Moving on now to reason number two. There is going to be an entire skill tree rehaul, and this involves new skills called relic skills which will further give you other options in the game it's also worth noting that your level cap will go from 40 to 70 with the dlc so i think that's a pretty big deal in itself now i'm hoping with this that they also implement the ability to respect um, not only your attribute points but also your perk points because if not otherwise it might just be worth making a new character to fully utilize the ability to kind of properly place your points into each skill tree seeing that there will be new abilities and stuff and as a result uh, new ways to play the game going forward it has also been announced that there will be some pretty significant changes to the cybernetics uh, where if you have too many they will actually cause you a debuff i don't know if this is their way of implementing cyber psychosis but it seems to me like they're trying to level the playing field so that v doesn't get too overpowered it's also worth noting that the armor ratings are actually not going to be linked to clothing anymore like your your hat your shoes your pants your shirt uh, that's all going to be just cosmetic and the armor rating will actually be linked to your cybernetics which is a uh, an interesting overhaul speaking of overhauls this one's pretty awesome we all know the ncpd in the game as it currently stands are uh, kind of a pushover for us you know it takes you like two blocks to run away from them and they just give up on top of that they're pretty they're pretty easy to beat even at the the max wanted level in response to that they've announced that the ncpd will likely um, be a much more difficult opponent now 
and they will pursue you. And uh, now is a good time to add that they will also include vehicle combat. Now, to my understanding, this was actually a mod um, for people on the PC, and um, the creator uh, almost inspired CD Projekt Red to implement this into their DLC. So kudos to them. Um, the modding community really, really helped the game out quite a bit. And uh, CD Projekt Red has now decided to include vehicle combat just because of that. And uh, getting back to NCPD, at a certain wanted level, it's gonna get so intense where, you know, when you hit five stars, for example, the max attack will actually swoop in over top of you or your location. And uh, they're apparently gonna be a much harder opponent this time around with the DLC. Now we've covered quite a few topics already, but um, one of the last ones I want to give here is uh, they have promised to overhaul the NPC. So the NPCs in the game currently are kind of silly. Um, sometimes they trip on each other, sometimes even though they have their head cut off, they're still making a phone call. It's a little janky in that regard. Uh, while it does provide some good laughs, they promise to overhaul all the NPCs in general which, uh, I mean, I'm using the word overhaul a lot, but they're planning to improve that in the DLC. And it's going to be reflected with also difficulty scaling through the different gangs you encounter. Right now, as mentioned earlier, V is pretty overpowered at level 40. And uh, they're trying to basically have the enemy scale with you. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to be like a they're going to match your level or whether it's just going to be overall a lot more difficult they're going to deal more damage but it's somewhere along those lines of course there's also going to be the addition of newer weapons uh newer cybernetic enhancements and the enemy ai will apparently also have just a much wider variety of quick hacks to actually inflict on you and that's what i wanted to go back on by saying they're overhauling the npc enemies um uh, the current state of uh, a hacker enemy, all they do is they overheat. That's their that's their go-to, that's the only hack they know. But apparently, now they'll be able to use disable weapon on you. They'll be able to uh, do a multitude of different uh, disabilities, maybe disable even your, your cyberware. So looking forward, the game is actually looking quite optimistic and I'm uh, pretty excited to say the least. Now again, uh, just please take this with a grain of salt as it's not set in stone by the actual uh, employees and the workers at CDPR. But uh, based on the word of those who have attended the Phantom Liberty Tours, it would seem like a lot of these updates that I've mentioned today will in fact be included in the DLC at some point or another. And uh, I think I'm going to end it here for now. There's a few other things on top of the stuff that I've mentioned, uh, you know, alleged improvements that come along with the DLC, but uh, I don't want to dwell too long in the conspiracies on what may or may not be in the game but uh tell me what you think tell me uh you know if you find that you're gonna be playing cyberpunk a little bit more in preparation for phantom liberty or maybe if you won't get it why you won't get it and uh we'll have a little discussion that's about it take her easy